بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار وبعد Brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says Bismillahirrahman irrahim Walfajr Walayalin ashr Allah opened this great surah Surah Al-Fajr By swearing By Al-Fajr the break of dawn. Walayal in Ashr and the ten days is the ten days of the Hijjah. And that is something agreed upon by all of the scholars of Tafsir. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala La yuqsimu illa bi'azimin min makhluqati. He does not swear and take an oath except by those great things from his creation. Allah swears by those some of those things from his creation which are great. And this is one of them. ashr. Allah says, I swear by Al-Fajr. And I swear by the ten days. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, As in the Sahih of Imam al-Bukhari, Ma min ayyamin, al-amalu salih, ahabbu ila Allah fihi, o fihinna, min mithli hadhi al-ayyam al-ashr. There's no days in which the righteous deeds, the good deeds, are more beloved to Allah than these, the deeds done in these 10 days. Yani, the salah you pray in Ramadan, it is not as great as the, Ramad, the salah you pray in these 10 days. The salah you pray in any other day of the year, it is not as beloved and as great as the salah or the zakah or the charity or the soul or any other ibadah will do in these 10 days which are coming maybe day after, after tomorrow it will be the first of the hijjah there's no actions which are more beloved to Allah than the actions which are done in these 10 days the greatest 10 days of the year days and nights except for one night that is Laylatul Qadr that is the only exception. Otherwise, these great ten days and nights are the greatest days and nights of the whole year for the Muslim. Let each of us ask himself, am I ready? Ask yourself, are you ready for these ten days? What are your plans for these ten days? What are your plans for these 10 days? It is sad. It is sad that some Muslims are even oblivious of these days. They don't even know that there's a, there's a month called the Hijjah. It is more sad if your children don't know. Remember the khutbah I talked about last week? You have the responsibility. And teaching the children the sha'air of Islam, the signposts of Islam, it's very, very important. Why are these 10 days the greatest days? The scholars have tried to explain by saying that it is the 10 days where all the great ibadat, they come together. 
Al-Hajj, all of us know Al-Hajj is one of the great pillars of Islam, one of the five pillars of Islam. These are the ten days when Hajj happens. Only once a year, of course. Maybe once a lifetime for those who can go. There's the Siyam of the Yawm Arafah. There's fasting in these ten days on the day of Arafah. There's the Nahr, slaughtering for Allah in these 10 days. So all the great ibadat, they come together in these 10 days. That's why they're the greatest 10 days. It is important that all of us know the importance and the great status of Hajj. It's one of the pillars of Islam. It's one of the pillars of Islam. We have to teach the young ones and the old ones. This is one of the main signposts of Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commanded his great slave Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam by saying to him, وَأَذِّنْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ يَأْتُوكَ رِجَالًا وَعَلَى كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ لِيَشْهَدُوا مَنَافِعَ لَهُمْ وَلْيَذْكُرُوا اسْمَ اللَّهِ عَلَى مَا رَزَقَهُمْ مِنْ بَهِيمَةِ الْأَنْعَامِ فَكُلُوا مِنْهَا وَأَطْعِمُوا الْبَائِسَ الْفَقِيرِ ثُمَّ لْيَقْضُوا تَفَثَهُمْ وَلْيُوفُوا نُذُورَهُمْ وَلْيَطَّوَّفُوا بِالْبَيْتِ الْعَتِيقِ ذَلِكَ وَمَنْ يُعَذِّبْ حُرُمَاتِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ وَأَذِّمْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he commands his slave Ibrahim alayhi salam, and call the people to come to hajj. There will come some of them rijal and walking. People used to walk to hajj. وَعَلَىٰ كُلِّ ضَامِرٍ And some of them will come on every lean camel, riding the camels. يَأْتِينَ مِنْ كُلِّ فَجٍ عَمِيقٍ They will come from every deep valley. Everywhere they will come from all over the world. And as it has come in some of the narrations, Ibrahim alayhi salam, he announced, he, he fulfilled the command of his Lord. He called to be the people to hajj and every, every Muslim had that call. It's one of the miracles of Allah. Call the people to hajj, Allah says. They'll come to you. Even today, people go by ship to hajj. Some people ride to hajj. Some of them will live close, they walk. Allah says, لِيَشْهَدُوا مَنَافِعَ لَهُمْ so they can witness the benefits for them. So they can witness the benefits for them. Al-Hajj is amazing. The benefits of Hajj are amazing. It is enough that one, it is the pillar of Islam. Bunya al-Islam ala khamsin. Islam is built on five pillars and the last of them is Al-Hajj. Number two. From the importance or the excellence of Hajj, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Man Hajj هذا البيت أو من حج لله فلم يرفث ولم يفسق رجع كيوم ولدته أمه." The one who comes and makes Hajj for Allah, and he does not engage in idle talk, indecent talk, and he stays away from sexual intercourse with his own wife or her own husband. He will return after he finishes the Hajj as the day when his mother gave birth to him. To make it more clear, Amr ibn al-As, radiallahu anhu, when he was ready to become a Muslim and before he used to be an opponent of Islam, he came and said, Ya, ya Rasulullah, I want to become Muslim, ready to take my shahada. Walakin ashtarit, but I have a condition. I want to become Muslim, but I have a condition. What is the condition? He says that Allah should forgive me all of my previous sins. That is my condition. If you want me to become Muslim, I have this condition. Allah should forgive me all those bad deeds I have done. This is in the Sahih of Imam Muslim. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says to him, Ama am, ama alimti ya Amr, anna al-Islam yahdumu ma kana qabla. Don't you know that when someone becomes Muslim, all of their previous bad deeds, they are destroyed and they are wiped away. Wa anna al-hijrata tahdimu ma kana qablaha. 
and the one who leaves a land because he cannot practice Islam properly and goes to another land where he can become a proper Muslim and practice properly. That hijra, hijra it destroys and wipes away all of your previous sins. And that hajj, the one who works hajj, it takes away and erases all the previous sins you have done. As the day, like the day when your mother gave birth to you. That's how clean you become. This is hajj. And from the benefits of hajj, the Prophet says, Wal hajjul mabrur, and the hajj which is done properly. ليس له جزاء إلا الجنة. It has no other reward except Jannah. And Al-Hajj, from the excellence of Hajj, it wipes away and takes away poverty. All of us here, we fear to become poor. That's why we work so hard. It is okay. It's human nature. We all want to become rich. If you want to become rich, listen to what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says. He says, Tabi'u بَيْنَ الْحَجِّ وَالْعُمْرَةِ فَإِنَّهُمَا يَنْفِيَانِ الْفَقْرَةِ وَالْذَنْبِ كَمَا يَنْفِي الْكِيرُ خَبَثَ الْحَدِيدِ Follow up. Hajj after Umrah. Hajj, Umrah, Hajj, Umrah. Because they wipe away. They wipe away poverty and sins. They wipe away poverty and sins just like when the ironsmith or the blacksmith he takes the iron ore and cleans it so they can have their actual, uh, their actual metal, their actual iron. Likewise, Hajj and Umrah, they clean away your sins and the poverty. Try it. Look at the people who do Hajj and Umrah almost every year or almost every other year. They're never poor. They're never poor. Do your own research. Wallahi. And from the excellence of Hajj, is that the Muslim, all of us here, he gets to visit the most dear and the most precious and the most loved land to him, which is the Haram. That land which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to his prophet about, قَدْ نَرَى تَقَلُّبُ وَجْهِكَ فِي السَّمَاءِ فَلَنْ وَلِّيَنَّكَ قِبْلَةً تَرْضَاهُ وَوَلِّ وَجْهَكَ شَطْرَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ we have seen you, how you turn your face to the sky. Because our Prophet ﷺ used to prefer, he used to love that he should face the Kaaba, not face Jerusalem. Allah says, we have seen how you turn your head so much, hoping that revelation will come so that we can turn and face the Kaaba. Allah says, فَلَنْ وَلِّيَنَّكَ Now we give you the command to turn and face the Kaaba. قِبْلَةً تَرْضَاهَا The Qibla which you, Muhammad, are pleased with more. It doesn't take away anything from Jerusalem, Baytul Maqdis, but Al Haram is greater. Every Muslim here, he has that passion and that longing of going and visiting that great house, which every day you stand five times and face. Every Muslim here, when you see pictures of the Haram, you say, I wish I was there, right or wrong. Someone who does Hajj, he gets that opportunity to visit that great sacred house of Allah. That land where all those great prophets visited. That is from the benefits of Hajj. And from the benefits of Hajj, it is the greatest, it is the greatest actualization of Islamic or Muslim brotherhood. al al islamiyya wal al imaniyya It is the greatest and practical display of how Muslims are brothers because there it don't matter who you are what color of your skin is where you're from it doesn't matter everyone is dressed in the same way everyone is doing the same things Islam it came to build brotherhood there's the societal brotherhood in the society in the community which is like this there's the smaller gathering, which is every day. Every day the men have to pray in the masjid. We have to be brothers. We come together and pray in the masjid. So that we don't see you, we say, okay, something wrong with Muhammad or Ahmad or Fatima. Maybe he or she is sick. 
Then there's the greater congregation of Jumu'ah. Then there's the greater congregation in a city or a town that is on Eid. Then there's the greatest congregation of Muslims which is on Hajj. Al-Hajj, the greatest display. Every kinds of forms and shapes of human beings, you'll see them there. What brought them there? Al-Islam. Al-Islam. You learn to appreciate that. You learn to appreciate that. If you still have those rusts in your heart of racism, al unsuriya then inshallah Allah takes that out for you witnessing Hajj. Al-Hajj, it teaches you humbleness and humility. It teaches you humbleness and humility. Again, everyone has the same clothes doing the same things. And there you witness so many other people who have much more problems than you. People who cannot walk, they wish they could walk. People who, they spend everything just to go for Hajj. It teaches you humbleness. Al-Hajj, from the excellence of Hajj, it gives you the chance to meet with the great scholars of Islam, Al-Ulama. This is known. This is known. All the Talabatul Ilm, the students of knowledge, and the Mashaikh, the scholars of Islam, they know the greatest place they ever meet is Hajj. Especially the days of Mina. There's so much more knowledge going on there than any other time, I can say that. And it's the best time to go, for, to go, to go and meet any scholars during the time of Hajj. Al-Hajj, look at the beauty of Islam. It is not just Ibadah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَيْسَ عَلَيْكُمْ جُنَاحٌ أَن تَبْتَغُوا فَضْلًا مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ There's no problem if you, seek to, if you want to seek the bounty from your Lord. The scholars of Tafsir have said, it means there's nothing wrong if you want to do trade, business, during Hajj. There's nothing wrong. It is the greatest place you'll get all the contacts you want. In all fields of business and trade and services, everyone is there. As Sheikh Muhammad Al Amin Al Shanqiti explained, as long as the actual business does not busy you from your ibad of Hajj, there's nothing wrong. Before Hajj, during Hajj, after Hajj, it's the greatest place to do Hajj. And back then, everyone used to take his products there and do business during Hajj. Lisa alaykum junah, and Allah says, there's no problem. So that they can witness the benefits of it. These 10 days are the greatest days of the year they are coming. And in, 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 and in them is this great ibad of Hajj, which we have to get to know. We haven't gone there, you can watch it on your internet. Show it to your children so that they get to know this is Islam. The problem we have today with most of our youth and even sadly some of the grown-ups is that we just want to belong somewhere. We want to belong, we want to fit in some. So we do all this crazy stuff just to fit in. Show them this is where we belong. We already fit in. We already perfectly placed. We are Muslims and this is our ummah. Look. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروه إنه هو البر الكريم والغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله بعد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت باركت على إبراهيم وآل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد والفجر وليال عشر the greatest ten days some of the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they used to say, Kana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he used to fast these 10 days or these 9 days because the 10th day is, is the day of, of Eid. He used to fast these days. Remember, every deed you do as a Muslim, 
you know dua dhikr giving charity helping orphans coming and studying your deen reading quran salah siyam the best you can do is these days so every deed you can do make sure you do it in these 10 days because it's more beloved to Allah and is greater in front of Allah than all the other deeds you do in the rest of the year. So fasting these nine days, it is very good. It is encouraged. It is not a must, it is encouraged. Increasing in the salawat you pray, it is encouraged. Increasing in dhikr, it is strongly encouraged. In fact, as Imam Bukhari, he narrates in his sahih, Kana ibn Umar, Abu Huraira, Yukabbirani, they used to make the takbir since the first day of the Hijjah. fil aswaq, and they used to walk in the marketplaces. ma'ahum, so the people will make takbir with them. Since the first day of the Hijjah, you have to make the takbir. Why is that? We just mentioned so many excellences of Hajj. And I know some of us, you feel bad because you haven't gone for Hajj. You feel you're missing out. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his mercy, he wanted to partner and to bring together those who haven't gone for hajj with those who are in hajj. So that we share with them some of the experiences they have. Al-hajj is all about dhikr and tawheed. Labbayk Allahumma labbayk. Labbayk la sharika laka labbayk. Inna alhamda wal ni'mat. Laka wal mulk, la sharika laka labbayk. I have responded to your call, labbayk Allahumma. I have responded to your call, oh my Lord, I have responded to your call, I'm here. Labbayk, I have responded to your call, la sharika lak, you have no partner. Tawheed. Inna alhamda, surely all the perfect praises, wa ni'mat in all favors and bounties are belong to you al mulk and the dominion is yours. La sharika lak, you have no partner. They say that there. For us, you do the takbir since the first day of the Hijjah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Lillahi alhamd. These are days of takbir and tahleel and tahmeed and tasbih. You do a lot of dhikr in this dua, in these days. Then there's dua. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Afdalu dua'in dua'i yawm arafah. The best dua is the dua on the day of Arafah, the ninth of this coming month. It's the best dua. It's the day of dua. And on that day, those who are not in Hajj, we fast. The Prophet says, Sawm yawm Arafah, ahtasibuhu inda Allah, an yukaffir as-sana, as-sanatu qablaha wa ba'dah. He says, fasting on the day of Arafah, I hope the reward in front of Allah is what? The sins of the previous year and the sins of the coming year are expiated. Fasting one day. Then comes the day of Eid, the tenth. It's a day when they slaughter, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed for us who didn't go for Hajj that we slaughter also and sacrifice for Allah. For Salli Rabbika, one har. So make sure your salah and your slaughtering is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We share with them some of the experiences. Some of the experiences they have from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the day of Eid is a day of happiness. It is one of the two Eids which we Muslims have. There's no other Eid except Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr after Ramadan. Make sure your children know it is Eid. Make sure you yourself, you know that it is Eid. Anyone who wants to slaughter, and slaughtering is a must for the one who has the ability. For the one who has the ability, meaning you have money which is excess of your basic needs. You have surplus income. You have money for your basic needs, then there's something else. There's more. You have to slaughter. It is a must. It is a must for you to slaughter. Whoever wants to slaughter on the day of Eid, and slaughtering has to be done after the salah. You don't slaughter before you pray. You have to slaughter after salah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, the one who slaughters before salah, إِنَّمَا هِيَ لَحْمُ قَدَّمَهَا عَلَىٰ أَهْلِ It is just meat you just gave to your, to your family. It's not the slaughtering which is 
a great ibadah in front of Allah. We have to slaughter after salah, right after Eid salah. You can do it that day, you can do it the next day, you can do the next day, you can do the next day before Maghrib. All those three days are for slaughtering, four days in fact. Something important for those who want to slaughter, you don't cut your nails. When the month of Dhul Hijjah starts, you don't cut your nails, you don't trim your hair until after you slaughter. That is the directions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And one animal is enough for one household. Meaning if the father or the, the, the husband is slaughters, the wife does not have to slaughter all the children. One animal for one household. These are the signposts of Islam. The one who glorifies the signposts of Islam that is better for you in front of your Lord. These are great days. We should feel this great, this greatness of these days. These are days of ibadah. We should do more ibadah. نسأل الله العظيم رب العرش الكريم يغفر لنا ذنوبنا ويكفر عنا سيئاتنا ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من لدنك رحمة وهج لنا من أمرنا رشدا اللهم ربنا اغفر لنا وارحمنا وعافنا وفعنا ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا ذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما أقم الصلاة